I did notice some things on Twitter. I did notice some things even in the chat. Um, guys, do me a favor, all right? And, and this will do yourself a service, and this will do the whore community a service. If you see rumors and even things that you think that's probably got to be true, that's probably got to be true. Don't go, don't go telling everybody. You know, before the trailer even comes out, you know, if you hear something that's completely, I heard, I heard Michael Myers gets killed in the first 10 minutes, you know, and if you hear weird, crazy shit like, like that, don't even say it. Don't even like give that a life to get out there into the ether because you know what? A, it's just a huge freaking rumor. B, it might not be. It probably won't even be true, something like that. All right, but I just, I just hate the idea of going on social media and just seeing all this shit coming at me that's not official, and then you get like eighteen thousand rumors. Uh, you know, it could be this, or it could be this, or it could be that, and it's just like I don't want to know that shit. Just, just keep it to yourself and wait until the movie. Or even the trailer. You can speculate. You know, if you got a freaking YouTube channel, go for it. Speculate all you want. Theory. You know, do 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 anything. Theories can be fun. Okay, but all I'm saying is just don't go and try to just like spoil it for everybody. Because at the end, even if it's not true, sometimes you feel like maybe I'm getting a little you know spoiled in the back of my head, and I don't like spoilers at all. And I definitely don't like hearing bullshit that's probably not even true anyway. You know, I'd rather discover it on my own. You know, I'll, I'll definitely talk about the information that's already out there that's official, you know. But I just, I, I can't stand, you know, I don't like leaks. I hate freaking leaks. And I just don't like when people start spreading information that might be true, might be true, and it might not be true. You know, because I just don't like spoiling shit for people. There's not, I'm not going to give you any spoilers. And I will debunk one um, big, um, I guess, leak that, that's already going around and people are saying it's real. I'm going to debunk it for you right now and tell you it's not. It's not. Okay, here's the the Myers rumor. Let's start with this. All right, let's start. Let's go ahead and debunk. If I can debunk a rumor, I'll do that, okay? Uh, now, if somebody says something that's the truth, of course, I'm not going to cover it. I'm not going to tell you, uh, you know, until the the trailer comes out, if it's official, maybe. But, yeah. So, um, this guy says, Michael's look in Halloween Ends is very reminiscent of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. He's wearing coveralls, but they're dirty green, as well as sleeveless green jacket. He's wearing a hood. And prepare yourself. He's maskless. Uh, and only with only the bottom half of his face visible okay uh in his right hand he holds a giant ass butcher knife and he has an axe slung over his shoulder he's clearly been living in the wild and i'm sure it wasn't fun for the local wildlife all right um and this guy is i mean look 221 likes 77 uh retweets this this is my example of spreading information out there that might not be true, you know? But, you know, a lot of naive fans are going to take information like this and they're going to run with it and they're going to take it as fact. You know, some of us were just, you know, we're naive. We don't know. We don't know any better. You know, we don't, we don't do research and check and see, like, Ralph, is it real? See, there you go. Some of you in the chat might already. So I'm telling you right now, this is this is not real. This is not real, okay? And I'm going to prove it to you here in just a sec. All right. So um, this, I'll give you another one. Um, this guy says, we are being trolled. The picture I posted was a fan, was of a fan concept. He even gives a link to the YouTube video. Um, and, and, uh, that video takes you to the actual guy that made this. He made a figure, uh, of kind of a, I guess a Rob Zombie's Halloween two version of, of, uh, James Jude Courtney. It's a cool looking figure. I'd like, I mean, I would happily display it on my shelf. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
But this does not belong in this current trilogy, in my opinion. Okay? I don't want to see this in, in this current trilogy. And I'm going to take it even further, one step further. I'm going to give you even more proof that this is not real by giving you that. Uh, this is the guy that made the customs. He says, uh, I'm thinking this is what's confusing people about the Halloween ends. Michael Myers uh, look just my custom figure. Okay. There, there's your proof right there. This guy made the custom figure, not from the movie whatsoever. Now, having said that, I haven't seen Halloween ends. You haven't seen Halloween ends. Anything's possible because we've never seen the movie, right? So is it possible that Myers might look like this? I guess. And if it is, if it does turn out to be like that, I don't want, I won't like it, but I got to see the whole context. Okay. I got to see the whole context. But as for now, this rumor has been debunked. Okay. Uh, I, I've provided the proof. I've provided the source for you. And um, it's not real, guys. It, it's a figure that this guy made, but it's not from Halloween Ends. All right. So I'm happy to debunk that for you guys. Hey, what's up, guys? If I could interject in here, um, last night I did that stream. And this morning I woke up and the creator of that figure, One Custom Figures Official, on Instagram. I, I urge you guys to go um, follow him on Instagram because very talented dude. Um, but he actually shared our, uh, a portion of my stream on his Instagram, you know, because he's going out of his way to debunk this uh, rumor that that is what uh, Myers is going to look like in Halloween Ends. So I applaud him for doing that. And a couple things I can share, I'll, I'll share like a little screen cap that I got right here. You'll see that here uh, of him sharing my stream just to, to prove it. Um, it says, uh, Drum Dums speaking on the Halloween Ends, one custom figures, concept, Myers figure. Well, somebody left a comment said he's supposed to be missing two fingers from his left hand. Because this guy's thinking that that, or I'm thinking this user thinks that that's the, uh, the way Myers is going to look. And uh, he basically says, I'm aware, brother, it's originally, it wasn't going to be based on any of the newer material. It just ended up that way. I've updated since. Uh, I just haven't took pics. So um, from that, I'm taking that he started out this figure just kind of as a base and didn't want it to be, you know, anything from like ends. Maybe he wanted it to start as Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I don't know. Okay. And, and maybe if he sees this, he can even like, you know, expound on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, just giving him a shout again, one custom figures, uh, a fi there's one customs figures official. Yeah. Very talented guy too. But, uh, yeah, he's going out of his way to just let people know, Hey, this, I didn't get this from the set of Halloween ends. All right. So as of right now, you know, that theory is debunked. That's not what Myers is going to look like. Now, having said that, we don't know what Myers looks like. Anything's possible, okay? They're saying that this movie is different. Myers might look like that. I have no idea, all right? I highly doubt it. Like, I highly doubt that they would say, hey, let's make Myers look exactly like Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, Hobo Myers. Why would they do that? It would be completely insane. So, as of this timestamp, I would be shocked if this is what Myers looks like. Is it a cool looking figure? Absolutely. But um, it's just way too similar to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, okay? Again, a figure like that is pretty badass looking, nice to have on your shelf. But, uh, you know, the reason I'm making this is just to give you a, a, even a more of an update that, hey, this guy's saying, no, this is not, I didn't get this from the set of Halloween Ends. I have no idea what Myers is going to look like in that movie, okay? So, anyway, uh, enjoy the rest of the, the clip. Okay, um, there's a couple of news articles that we're going to skim through. Um, one by uh, John Carpenter and one by uh, about Christopher Nelson, okay? Just, these are things that I think are kind of interesting to discuss. So I wanted to start with those. So t John Carpenter teases Halloween Ends will be a departure from the first two films in new trilogy. 
And uh, the celebrated filmmaker returns as composer. This has me excited, guys. Alongside his his son, Cody Carpenter, and godson, Daniel Davies. All right. All right. When Michael Myers returns to the big screen this fall, don't expect the same old slasher fest as the previous two installments in the rebooted Halloween trilogy written and co-written by David Gordon Green. I think that's a good thing. Halloween Kills was freaking, um, you know, it was... It was like aliens to alien, right? Uh, I'm not saying it's good as aliens. I'm just saying in terms of numerical. Like there were so many kills in Halloween Kills. To do that again would kind of be pointless. So I'm glad that they're going smaller scale in this one. Okay. Sci-Fi Wire recently caught up with John Carpenter on the phone over the phone to celebrate the 40th anniversary of The Thing. And we just didn't or couldn't resist asking the celebrated filmmaker musician about Halloween Ends which he scored alongside, I already read that. And here is his quote. He says, well, it's Halloween and it's ends. He answered with a little chuckle. You'll see it's a departure from the others. It's interesting. Dave is a really good director. I love working with him. Carpenter didn't elaborate beyond that. Though it, it's already been confirmed that the film takes place four years after the events of Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills both of which unfolded over the same blood-soaked evening. Jamie Lee Curtis and Andy Matichak are slated to return as Laurie Strode and granddaughter Allison, respectively. And uh, you know what? I, I, I'll give Laurie Strode, I'll give Jamie Lee Curtis the the due respect here because I think my channel uh, has this stigma of being really hard on... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and you're right I have been I've said it many times I'm ready to move on from the character but I can't take away anything from her as far as keeping this franchise alive I don't think it would be anywhere near where it is without her I think that 250 million dollar global box office of Halloween 2018 I think she is a big reason why that happened okay that and a lot of people like that movie okay so gotta give I gotta give her credit um, this is the final chapter of this trilogy. So, of course, we know that she's alive. So, yeah, I'm curious to see what happens with Laurie Strode. All right. I don't want Laurie Strode to die at the beginning of the movie. I don't. She is a part of this story. She wasn't really much of the story of Halloween Kills. I mean, she pretty much laid in the bed the whole time. So, yeah. Do I want Laurie Strode to kick ass and take names in this movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, this is a, a quote uh, from, let's see, Chris Bernier and Paul Brad Logan spoke with Sci-Fi Wire last year and admitted that it left, uh, if left to his own devices, he'd continue the franchise indefinitely. I'm trying to restrain myself and behave and wrap it up in a conclusive way, he added. Because if I look at it as a personal opportunity for me to play with the characters and the world that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill created... I want to make it very contained and controllable. I want to be a curator of the property for a minute, and I want uh, to do some quality control, for lack of a better term, and have some fun in that wheelhouse, wheelhouse, and then say goodnight and let the next generation and next filmmaker and the next great creative idea take over with that mythology. So, um, the, I... I pre-read this i'm not going to read the rest of it because they go into talking about the exorcist trilogy which i didn't know that like dave gordon green i knew he was doing the Exorcist. i didn't know he was going to do another trilogy jesus and by the way guys if you haven't checked out the thing with two heads the um uh the podcast that him and uh sean clark have definitely definitely i gave the whole thing a listen the latest episode a listen um a few days ago and it's just really fun to listen to. They talk about the convention circuit. They talk about their relationship with different celebrities. And sometimes they'll talk about some juicy stuff like, you know, Halloween Ends. Because Christopher Nelson, he's a major part of all three of these movies. Halloween Ends FX artist Christopher Nelson talks reshoots and says the movie is weird and different. We Man, but the, guys, that could mean a lot of things. Weird and and different and he's you know he's comparing that to two movies that just came out and maybe he's comparing that to the entire franchise okay um let me ask you guys before i get to reading this does that excite you that that phrase weird and different or does that scare the fuck out of you i'm curious i'm so curious to see what you guys think about this weird and different 
you know, when you think of comparing, you know, thinking of Halloween Kills, and a lot of you hate Halloween Kills, and thinking about Halloween 2018, which is more of a crowd pleaser, what is your thoughts on weird and different? Because if you hate Halloween Kills, then weird and different, I mean, it, 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 to some of you, it can't get any worse, right? So, you know what? Do I want the same? Or do I want weird and different, right? So that's a, that's a way to look at it. My opinion, um, <laughs> Destiny, I feel nothing. <laughs> um, uh, Dave Vanderhoff says it scares him. Uh, Mizzy says it scares Mizzy. <laughs> um, Ralph doesn't excite me. Sorry. Okay. You don't have to apologize. You know, it's everybody's got their guy. By, by the way, Ralph, there are people that absolutely hate hate this whole trilogy. This whole direction. It almost seems like some of some of them are so mad at this direction that they, you know, they they want it to burn down in flames. You know? Uh, which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah, I, I guess I was kind of that way with um, the Black Christmas remake. Like, to me, there's no way that this could ever be as bad as the Black Christmas remake. No way. All right, let's go to the Christopher Nelson. Weird and different. Weird and different, Okay. A few interesting Halloween Ends tidbits came out of this week's episode of the podcast show, The Thing With Two Heads, a popular horror-based podcast on the YouTube co-hosted by Sean Clark and and, uh, Christopher Nelson, who worked on all three movies. All right, here's the quote. I'm excited for people to see this movie, said Nelson while speaking on the podcast. I think it's weird, it's different, and I like that. So he likes that it's weird and different. Good. Um, let me pause right here, or maybe I should read the next quote before I give my, um, give my, my comment. Okay. Let me read the next quote. Nelson also revealed that the reshoots took only four days to complete. Um, not two weeks like many sources had reported. Okay. Also, I saw rumors out there that, that there were two sets of reshoots. Like they had reshoots shortly after, and then they had more reshoots. Um, I don't think that's true. To me, it sounds like there was a mix-up in communication there. Let me know if I'm wrong, guys, because some of you might know better than me. But I think there were only one set of reshoots. And reshoots are very common. Reshoots are very common because um, reshoots happen for a variety of reasons, okay? Uh, and it, ha- it happened with quite a few of the Halloween movies. Hell, Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2. Both had reshoots, okay? Um, a lot of times it could be beefing up the story. You know, John Carpenter's The Fog is a great example of reshoots. John Carpenter's The Fog really didn't have a lot of those, uh, the kill shots, you know, the g- really graphic shots that you see in that movie. Most of them were not in the original cut. And so in, in any any uh, director, when he makes a movie, he gives that movie to the studio. The studio will look at it. And they'll say, oh, okay, um, we need to fix this, this, and this. It's no different than any other job, really. So they give it back to the director, and the director goes and fixes those things. Unless the director is Tarantino, and he says, fuck off. And he's got his, you know, he gets full uh, creative control. Most directors don't have that, you know? So, like I said, it's don't get scared by reshoots. It's an extremely common thing. And a lot of times, it can make the movie even better, you know? Not all the time. But I think, I actually think most of the time, a reshoot, because what a reshoot does is it gives a director a chance to step back from the, you know, the principal shoot, gets, you know, take a breath, and hell, even the director himself might think of shots that he wishes he would have done a little differently. So the studio is going to catch stuff like that, and they're going to say, hey, um, now that you've had time to breathe, let's go back and let's fix a couple things here. You know, like I said, this is not, this is not just in, you know, the movie world. This is in pretty much every, um, every occupation you can think of, you know, sometimes you got to go back and you got to, uh, tighten things up a little bit. You know, there's a, there's a reason it's like a first draft and then the reshoot is like the, the final draft. Okay. So, um, it's usually for like the kills. If you want to add some more kills to it, if you want to beef up the story, uh, if there's something that might have been left out, because sometimes when you're shooting a movie along the way, 
uh, you don't see the stuff that's missing until you're finished with everything. And then you go back and watch it. And then you're like, oh, I probably should have put something like that in there. You know? So, yeah. Reshoots do not scare me in the slightest. It's not an issue it, for me. Some people might be, might get scared by reshoots. Not me. Not at all. Uh, I went I went and did uh, Halloween reshoots. Uh, I'm going. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I can't. I did that and it went well. Uh, it was very busy. Yeah, because you have a, sh- a short amount of time. Um, we didn't do a whole lot. It wasn't uh, two weeks, like everyone says it was. It was four days, but it went well, and I was very happy with everything. We had a good time, and I'm excited for people to see the movie. Um, another reason I just thought about with, with reshoots is if you think back to like Halloween six, you know, there's two cuts of that movie and that's because there were, um, reshoots. They went in and they literally, I believe it was two, maybe three days that they shot the entire new third act of the theatrical cut. And of course they took a lot of the, the weird cultish type shit out of the, the producer's cut. And uh, I prefer the theatrical cut. I just do. Okay. Um, but that's a case where, in my opinion, the reshoot suited the movie. You know? So, yeah. Uh, on a related note, producer Jason Blom called Halloween Ends a very good movie after watching a recent screening. Uh, follow the link to check out the article. Okay, so I'm not going to read any more of that. So, yeah, I mean... It's it, there's nothing there that shocks me, um, King George. I'm just hoping for a good definitive conclusion. Absolutely, that I mean I, I can't ask for anything more than that, you know. Um, and I could probably do some some points on the things that I'm excited about about this movie. Um, but it seems like a lot of people seems like a lot of people just want this movie to freaking come out and die. <laughs> and uh wouldn't it be great wouldn't it be great if that um what i say weird and strange or something like that or weird and different if, if that turns out to be a really cool aspect of the movie and it, it and, and it actually kind of fixes a lot of the problems that people had with halloween kills um at the end of the day i i do want this movie to be great i really do am i excited absolutely i'm 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 a Halloween fanboy, okay? At the end of the day, I am. A, I will die a Halloween fanboy. I don't care how crazy the fan base gets. Um, that's just who I am, and I can. I can. I'll never apologize for it. Uh, and I get that some people don't like the Halloween franchise, and that's fine too. That's fine too. But yeah, I'm. I want this movie to be great. I want, and I have caught some shit. Like it just when I po- when I posted my thumbnail f- to to promote this particular stream, there were. Um, there were a couple people in the in the uh, chat saying, I'm going to automatically say this is the best movie of the year. And I know that's an easy thing to believe because I am a Halloween fanboy, but I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Like right now, I'm scared that that's not going to happen, okay? And if anything, I'm going to be as honest as I possibly can be. When I come out of that movie, whatever's in my head, and I, guys, by the way, I can't control what goes in my head after I watch a movie. I can't, if, my, if my head feels like, you know, cookies and cream ice cream all the way around like that happy that i'm i'm gonna tell you you know so that might happen when i walk out of this movie and it it might be my favorite movie of the year but i'm not just gonna go right out like and say this is my favorite movie of the year just to say it i don't give even my favorite franchise i'm not gonna give it a pass star wars is one of my favorite franchises and you see how a lot of those movies turned out okay if this if this movie's bad, I'm going to call it bad. Are there other bad Halloween movies? Absolutely. When I came out of um, Halloween Resurrection, I was pissed off. I mean, I could, I, I was like, I cannot believe that just happened. Okay? When I came out of Rob Zombie's Halloween, I was perplexed. Like, wow, that was different. That's not really Halloween. You know, my opinion... Um, when I came out of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, I was like, that was amazing. Not really Halloween, but I loved it like like crazy. I, and I still do. I love Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. So, you know, this franchise has its highs and lows for me. 